Hello FX fans and welcome to the first ever episode of Flight Deck. My name is Nathan and I'll be your pilot on this journey. In this monthly show we'll be taking a behind the scenes look at the development of our latest Airfix models. We'll be talking to the team and we'll be giving you tips to improve your modelling. January is always an exciting time of year as we get to announce our 2021 range. By now I'm sure we've had a chance to look at our 2021 range live on our site along with our latest and newest models. So what are our destinations today? Let's take a closer look. We take a closer look at a stunning mosquito. We sat down with Paramjit, a product designer here at Airfix, to talk about the brand new starter sets. We show off the powerful 1930 4.5 litre Bentley. And finally, we take a closer look at your images. I'm Nathan, we're Airfix, and this is Flight Deck. Without question, the de Havilland Mosquito qualifies as one of the finest fighting airplanes of the Second World War, and one which could claim to be the envy of every other air force, particularly the Luftwaffe, who tried, but never quite managed, to produce an equivalent aircraft. A true multi-role aircraft, the Mosquito's famous nickname, the Wooden Wonder, referenced the fact that this hugely successful British aircraft was constructed using non-strategic materials and employed a clever system of balsa and birch plywood lamination, which gave the aircraft great strength. Although they relied on the performance and survivability of their mosquitoes, men in these units would often take its nickname a stage further and affectionately refer to their aircraft as flying furniture. I sat down with product designer Paramjit to talk about the brand new starter sets. Starter sets have been a popular product for beginners, but our latest starter sets will be even more accessible to a wider range of people looking to get started with plastic modelling. Let's see what he had to say. Well, what we tried to do with these new starter sets were to make them as simple as possible, to come together, um, making the internal detail um, not the main focus of it, focusing more on the external, how it fits together, how easy it will be to paint, sacrificing some detail and having less parts in there just to make it as a quicker build. And then obviously uh, for the aircraft, we designed new, two new stands for them, uh, specific to those kits rather than a generic one, which were like the shadow stands. The target audience for these starter sets are young children uh, who are looking to get into the hobby and adults from any age who have probably never built a kit or who are returning to the hobby. Subjects are two aircraft and two tanks. Um, for the tanks we've got the Tiger and a Sherman and for the aircraft we've got a Spitfire and a Hawk. So um, obviously the Spitfire is one of the most iconic aircraft probably in the world. Uh, Hawk is obviously a well uh, recognized aircraft and obviously Sherman and Tiger as well. The goal of the starter sets are to bring people into the hobby because from over time what we've found out is that People will buy these like simple kits, assuming that they are simple. Um, they might be marketed as simple, but when you're trying to put them together, they're not as easy to put together. That usually puts people off the hobby. This is trying to engage them a bit more. Trying to, again, coming back to the, like, the simple fact, is that you're trying to make it as simple as possible. Uh, not, not too many parts, not too many options, that sort of stuff. Things go together fairly easily. Uh, and obviously we've, done something a bit different where we've uh, done the coloured plastic uh, for these ones for example the Red Hawk is all uh, moulded in red to make it easier for people to paint if you don't want to paint it you can just put the decals on that sort of thing same with the tanks you can paint just like little areas what makes it easier than previous starter sets is obviously the simplicity to it we've done the new instruction style which we're hoping people will give us feedback and tell us how good it is does it help them build the kit a bit better? We, we've done it so that it sort of tells you where to put the glue, where to paint, and when to put uh, different uh, areas into the process. Just trying to help you along the way, because again, just trying to understand if someone has never built a kit before, 
how would they do it and obviously from my point of view I've been doing it for so long so I take a lot of things for granted um, but if again if someone who's never done this before how would they approach it and trying to make it as easy for them as possible. For the tanks the Tiger and Sherman the tracks are very simple so all the road wheels and everything are molded onto the tracks just to make it uh, as simple to build for the modeler as possible just so that you don't have so many different parts and they both come as classic kits as well which are the more complicated version if you do want to up your game maybe perhaps. Starter sets include obviously the kit um, which is coloured in the plastic so for the Tiger tank it is in the sand sort of colour, Sherman is in like in the dark uh, olive drab, uh, Hawk is in the red, um, Spitfire is in the grey and then they all come with the paints uh, and the decals and the, yeah, it comes with the glue and it comes with the paintbrush so more or less everything you need to uh, build the kit straight out of the box. With its front-mounted supercharger, the 4.5-litre Bentley became the quintessential British sports car of the 20s and the 30s. It was shaped from the earlier four-cylinder 3-litre, but produced substantially more power of its blown engine. As such, it was a stunning road car and a perfect contender for endurance racing. Due to its dramatic appearances at Le Mans and successes in speed trials at the Brooklyn circuit, racing and winning became synonymous with Bentley during this period and few other models capture this image as well as the 4.5 litre Bentley. The number 9 car featured in this kit, UU5872, is the original Birkin team car, known as Birkin Blower No. 2. This is the car that made a dramatic appearance at the 1930 Le Mans 24-hour race. Finally, we take a closer look at your images. If you want your images featured on the next episode of Flight Deck, send them to marketing at airfix.com. So unfortunately that's all we have time for this month. I hope you enjoyed the first ever episode of Flight Deck. If there's anything you'd like to see in future episodes of Flight Deck, please comment in below. And of course, subscribe so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching. Nathan, over and out.